Hi guys, I'm on the Essex coast today and uh, I've come back to an area that I've been to before but I haven't been here for a while and uh, I felt it was uh, time was due for me to have a, a re-explore of this place and I think that's really important for wildlife photographers. Um, it's really important to know your local area but also it's important to go uh, on a regular basis to see just to see what's around. Now uh, this place or this area is generally good in the winter because lots of waders come in there's uh, different ducks and geese uh, and wading birds you've got curlews, red shanks, um, brink geese, barnacle geese, there's teal and widgeon and stuff like that. Also it's pretty good uh, sometimes from um, birds of prey so marsh harriers, barn owls, sometimes sh sometimes uh, shorted owls. So yeah it's just a case of having to wander around and seeing what's of, you know around at the moment. Um, now I've got my 600mm lens and uh, generally if I'm just going for a wander and um, I'm sort of exploring or re-exploring I take my 200 to 500 millimeter zoom because it's much smaller much lighter easier to carry but the only thing is this area generally or often the wildlife can be quite distant so I felt that actually I bring my 600 mil I've got my 1.4 converter on and uh, that gives me that longer reach with really good quality now it's way bigger and way heavier but I've just got to um, man up don't be a baby and carry the lens around um, I'm only walking about three or four miles so you know it shouldn't be too bad uh, and I think uh, for today it's the right call um, so yeah I don't know what I'm going to see uh, but fingers crossed I'll get some good stills uh, some good videos to put on this uh, vlog and uh, anything that's decent I'll uh, put on after this uh, this piece to camera so yeah uh, you know I hope you um, enjoy what's coming I don't know what's coming yet uh, fingers crossed uh, I get some decent um, footage some decent stills and um, yeah it makes this vlog worth well worthwhile so uh, I'll speak to you soon guys Hi guys, I've just had a really unexpected um, wildlife encounter. Um, so as I said earlier, I'm basically wandering around uh, one of my local sort of uh, wildlife areas on the Essex coast, sort of thinking I'm going to get um, waders, you know, uh, and, and geese and ducks and stuff like that. And then um, as I was walking along the sea wall, which is just over there, um, I was looking down this side into the fields and I saw these couple of little sort of brown lumps and at first I thought they were mud but it turns out they were brown hairs and um, so I walked back along the sea wall and then dropped down sort of a, a couple of hundred yards uh, back that way onto the track and then I made my way really slowly and really carefully um, up this track and uh, I've got some bushes here and some bushes that side um, and the beauty of this is as well the field that the hares are in is higher than this uh, the bottom of this bank so I could drop my tripod down reasonably low but I didn't need to be laying on the ground and I'm virtually eye level with the hares and uh, uh, it was astonishing uh, at the time the sun was out so I had a uh, lovely backlit hares they're running around chasing each other uh, there's a little bit of boxing uh, even though it's a bit early for that it, Honestly, it was just astounding. So I'm really pleased that I brought my um, 600 mil prime lens with me. So I've got my 600 here, um, and I've got a 1.4 converter on it. So that gives me 840 millimeters. So what with the long reach, so I'm quite a long way away from the hairs. I didn't disturb them at all, even though I haven't got a hide with me or, I'm, or wasn't down ridiculously low. Uh, so I'm covered by these bushes here, which gives me a bit of cover. And also the other thing is, that uh, bank, that sea wall, uh, breaks up my silhouette. So um, it means I'm, you know, pretty unobtrusive actually. And that really helped. Um, so it's absolutely stunning. Now, you might be wondering why I haven't got the big lens on the tripod. And uh, really stupidly, I forgot to bring my vlogging uh, tripod with me. So I'm having to shoot this bit to camera on my main tripod, which means uh, I've not been out to vlog while I was photographing the hares. Uh, and if the hairs any of them pop up and there is a couple hunkered down still right over there but they haven't moved for about an hour and a half um, so if they did start to do something I would have to do it handheld uh, some shell duck just gone across but 
I'm not quick enough to get them I'm going to carry on doing this so yeah absolutely astounding it's clouded over now so I've got some shots um, with the hairs in sort of cloudy conditions but I've also got some uh, shots of them and some footage in uh, backlit bright conditions and it was absolutely superb so yeah I mean I can't believe that um, um, that I've got these shots it's probably my best brown hair shots uh, ever possibly and I wasn't even expecting it and as I say I've got the big lens thankfully with me um, with a 1.4 converter so 840 millimeters I'm shooting at one two thousandth of a second because when they're running they're really quick and obviously as they run I'm going to pan the camera to keep up with that movement so I could maybe get away with less than a two thousandth of a second maybe a twelve fifty or something like that but I'm going to stick I stuck with a two thousandth of a second and then for the footage I was doing slow-mo footage uh, so I've got both now um, the uh, lens was wide open so I started shooting without the converter so it was wide open at f4 and then I started shooting with the converter and that drops the maximum aperture down to f5.6 but there was easily enough light at f5.6 and in fact uh, a couple of shots I probably stopped the lens down to about f8 uh, just to give me a slightly more sharpness um, but yeah absolutely brilliant so what I'll do is this is um, not a massively long vlog but I'm going to put the footage or some of the footage uh, and the stills are either at the end of this or I've probably put some on even before this because I'm so excited I just want to get this footage up I want to show you you know what I've seen I've, I've been here for about um, four hours and in all of that time there was probably only about uh, a couple of minutes three or four minutes worth of action so you do have to be patient uh, and that's one of the key things about wildlife photography isn't it patience is the key um, and then last but not least um, I think you know at the end of the day um, yes we've got to be lucky but the more you're out looking for wildlife the luckier you get so it needs to be pace, patience while you're actually here I had to wait a long time for that action but also you need to be patient and get out a lot so um, that you do get these moments you can't expect to go out once a month and it all just fall into place you need to be out a lot so that'll be my advice get out a lot check all your local areas out get an idea of how the wildlife um, works at, at certain times of the year and then when you do find wildlife whatever you do just don't leave it I mean I there's no way I was going to leave until everything settled down and there was no more action because you never know what can happen so yeah I hope you've uh, either enjoyed the footage in the stills or you do enjoy the footage in the stills and uh, I'll say bye for now guys uh, so yeah thanks for watching and I'll speak to you on my next video oh just before I, uh, I finish uh, if you haven't already subscribed and you like what you've seen if you can consider subscribing that would be great uh, if you can give the uh, video a like if you do like it a thumbs up that would be brilliant oh and if you do subscribe uh, if you can press the little bell icon you'll be notified when my next video is uploaded and it's free to subscribe so you know it's a good deal is it not uh, so yeah I'll speak to you soon